David Arell has spent decades in counter-terror and security posts, including in the Protection and Security Division of the Israeli Security Agency. He's now part of ACERO Worldwide. Good evening, David. Thanks very much for being here. And Senior Defense Correspondent Chai Vitt. David, if we saw in Brussels the attack happening maybe more inside the airport, inside departure terminals, and in this case still outside, but as Shai says, still close, still crowds gathering, how can you prevent that target being used by IS. Okay, first of all, I'd like to say some positive things about the, that Turkey, would be great. the Turkish response. Uh, I agree that there are similarities with the Brussels attack, but there are some very uh, things that are quite different. In the Brussels attack, the terrorists were able to get into where they wanted to get into, uh, opposite the uh, American check-in counters, opposite the Starbucks cafe, the most crowded areas, and, and blow themselves up inside the terminal. Here, they were attempting to get inside the terminal. They were detected, apparently detected by the police. Um, uh, there was a firefight. Um, not clear if one of them managed to actually get inside the building or not, but um, most of the damage was outside of the terminal. And of course, the number of casualties is, is, is horrific. But look at the difference. Uh, Brussels airport was closed for 12 days as a consequence of the mass damage to the airport. Here, the airport, the damage, and almost, ne almost negligible, the damage, because it was on the outside of the terminal. And therefore, the airport it was, able, was more resilient. It was able to continue operations uh, a few hours and later. And you attribute that to a better infrastructure? It's a better security infrastructure, the idea of having a screening at the entrance. But then I go back to the point that my colleague made that is quite correct. Here we have another issue. Once you make the checkpoint at the entrance to the terminal building, and here you have the, the X-ray machines and the magnetometer gates, that creates a crowd. It's a, it's a checkpoint. So now instead of having a crowd inside the terminal, you have one on the outside. And this crowd is, it becomes vulnerable to the attack. And therefore, so the casualties were just as high, but the actual damage to the, the terminal was less. There is a uh, solution. It's not an easy one. You need to add additional rings even further out. Like well, I don't want to go into too many uh, uh, compared well, to, to Ben Gurion Airport, but for example, you have a, if you have a vehicle checkpoint further out that can uh, look for irregularities, uh, people, cars before they reach the terminal. We're going to go uh, more in depth. I want to hear a little bit more of exactly what kind of layers of security, the rings of security, as you say, might be used here. Let's just go, David. I just want to continue the rings of security. If Turkey, if Brussels, if any European or Western airport is interested in shifting its security policy these days, but how this should is, it This do is it? actually being discussed now amongst all the European nations whether to have uh, uh, security measures at the entrance to the terminals. The airlines and the airports are pushing back at the moment. Istanbul now probably is going to shake them up a bit and they'll have to. Pushing back on what grounds? Uh, convenience, uh, convenience to customers, people, uh, uh, service, they want people to come into the building, they want them to be into the air-conditioned uh, halls and not outside waiting to go in, having them being screened on the outside is not so, uh, uh, not so popular, but this will have to be uh, uh, revisited again now because, uh, because of the attack. But uh, back to the question about adding additional rings, if you now push back to the entrances, you then have to add additional rings of security that will protect the crowds that are being now uh, uh, are forming at the entrance to the terminals, and even further back at the, again where the, the road, the, the approach roads to the airport, uh, as is done in some airports around the world. Shai, if we're going in that direction, and if we're using perhaps Israel as an example that's mm -hmm. uh, frequently cited in terms of air, airport security and rings of security, that right. might include a controversial issue. Right, there are more controversial a aspects to it. You know, there are technical aspects which I think it's high time, you know, for Western societies to adapt. I, I think uh, there's no choice but to face the truth in terms of a, a, a greater need for certain technical uh, appliances or methods in terms of uh, uh, combating this problem. But there's, there are also more controversial methods which really have to do with a certain degree of racial profiling that does exist when it comes to Israel. There is no doubt that uh, Arab passengers in terminals in, in, in the airport at Ben Gurion International uh, Airport here in Israel go through a different experience than other people. Now, uh, that is a reality here in Israel. You can debate whether it's justified, whether the, the, the saving a life uh, it justifies that kind of method. But I think there's no doubt that Western societies in general would have a problem uh, applying these kinds of methods. The question is how, how effective are they, how important are they? That's something that is not comfortable to discuss, but I think it may very well The question well again be. of how big of a sort of cultural change uh, mm -hmm. is, are they ready for? 
to that? Can you say that uh, you have to remember that in, in uh, Turkey, all, all the people <laughs> look uh, uh, Middle Eastern, uh, so racial profiling is not going to work there. What is important is to adopt what we call behavior profile or cognitive screening as a way of detecting irregularities. And I am, I'm against racial profiling, but I think the behavior profiling is, is one Walk of the ways. Walk us through briefly that. What does behavioral profiling look for? If you are charged with doing that at airport security in one of those rings of security, what are you looking for? Well, in, in, the, in, in, all, in most of the terrorist attacks that have been analyzed, the perpetrators of the attacks have shown certain indicators regarding their behavior, their appearance, what they are wearing, what they are holding. For example, the Brussels terrorists, all three of them had identical bags. People didn't talk much about it. Very, very significant. This is a, an indicator that we've seen in the past uh, many years ago, in the 80s and the 90s. Therefore, we teach our security personnel to be able to identify these indicators, behavioral, appearance, relating to context in their documentation. And um, th this is, I believe, the way to go. Interesting. We'll go back to him in a little while. David uh, Harrell, I just want to go back now to the security, to the technicalities, aside from the diplomatic questions. Now, what's next? Well, we've seen four significant attacks or attempted attacks against aviation in the, in the last six, seven months. We've seen the blowing up of the metro, the Russian metro jet. We've seen the attack in Brussels. We now see Istanbul, and we had the attempt to blow up the Somalian plane with the, also with a suicide bomber on board the plane. Do you see that as a coincidence? Or no, no, this is an trend? escalation. I, I, would, I, would, I think we, we, we must know that ISIS seems to be targeting aviation, as many groups have done it in the past, because of the, it's a high value and strategic target, and we have to start thinking, well, what's next? And uh, now they seem to be able to bring suicide bombers to airports in Europe. The next step, maybe they'll bring car bombs. Uh, maybe they'll be able to get their hands on uh, uh, man pads, which may be in proliferation that are coming through either from Syria or from the Balkans. And all these are things that are threats. And we mustn't be caught waiting, um, yeah, keep, keep on uh, preparing ourselves for, for a threat that they've already carried out. They could move on and, and carry out something more significant. So security professionals have a, have a big job on their hands.